What's up, YouTube? I have our top two, and we're here at Georgia, and this is their deck tech, so please introduce yourselves. All right, I'm Tommy Lamont. I got second to Mr. Eric Ariola, who got first. He beat me in the finals. And uh, this is our sweet deck tech. Uh, again, okay. shout outs to Joe Bass, Gordon Kane for driving. I am Eric for helping build the deck, Steven for helping with the deck, and me for and where would y'all like to start? The uh, start off the start in nature section. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Water is the most important part, anyways. All right, so we got a bro chicken turnip at top. Uh, Hexproof guys are real good this format because Arbiter is a real card, and tricky turnips just like the, your turn three play, hopefully, the sword one. Uh, I don't know what else to say. He's real good. It's uh it's unbounceable. Evo bait for Ed Jack, which makes him real good too. And uh, Tricky Turnip's there to go in for game. Uh, Blue Mons is a, is a overall good card. Hopefully we fill you in. Uh, great combos off of Ed Jack and also just uh, a decent body just for you to go over your opponent's creatures. Uh, of course, and we know Sword Horn is just the beat stick. A, Low cost creature, 5,500 power. Nothing really much to say about that. It's one of the best cards in the game right now. And I don't know. Myself, I kept on bouncing, uh, wanting to play two Homunculons just because his effect is really good. Uh, especially if you have BVP out, you can tap more creatures and control the board state. But he talked me down just to playing just one, trying to keep the multi sift count low. We don't want it too high. Don't don't want to get uh, multi screwed whenever you need to play key cards like Sasha or your Evos. So yeah, we got a uh, Anjak also, uh, real good, eight thousand power. Um, when he dies, you get Broodmother back, hopefully, or you get something worse than Broodmother back, like a Hexproof Dude or a PPR. Um, moving on to Light, we've got Rain Cloud Kraken, who is probably the worst card in the deck. But it's a, it's a unfortunate necessity, because we got to have our BBP bait. Uh, keeper, yeah. your favorite card, you want yeah, to play? The keeper, yeah. Uh, play three of that guy? Yeah, three Keepers, so you have your uh, targetable lineups, Keepers and Turnips. Uh, today was a lot of just mirror matches for me. I, I think I think played nothing but mirror match besides one round. Just played uh, red blue rush. Uh, other than that, keeper and turnips helped me out in the rush matchup. Uh, it's always good to have more hex proofs in decks. Mm -hmm. All right, you go. Uh, BBPs. Uh, it might be the best evolution in the game. It's up there. It might be the best card in the game, honestly. Uh, in my opinion, helps it, helps uh, stabilize your field, make sure you're yeah, gaining okay. control. Yeah, it's almost it's almost always one of the what I want to be playing on turn five, especially when you have like a real field presence. You can just clear their field on turn five, just really win the game, tempo ahead. Um, Arbiter, yeah, I mean, is a relevant raise for BVP and is, can stop two creatures from attacking. So whenever. They hit Arbiter, it just helps you seal that victory most of the time. And it's 2500, so like against Rush, it's just like a blowout when you get him. Because you tap down their little dudes and then swing into him. I know in my top four, I killed a Blitzermack off my Arbiter, it was sweet. And we got Fiji Sasha. Yeah, Sasha is the, I guess, the main focus of the deck. The game in you Once you have Sasha out and you have at least one shield, as you notice, there's not a lot of spells, so you always have uh, cards to fill with Sasha's effect. So you always discard and you have the one shield there to stabilize and try and go for game that next turn or just fill up your board presence with it. PJ uh, is the only spell in the deck. We play a few spells to maximize our Broodmother and Sasha. Um, it's a really good shield because, like Arbiter, it stops two guys. Which is something that I think they're the only two shield blasts that you can say that consistently with. Yeah, without needing anything else, yeah. PJ and Arbor are right now the two shield blasts that, that can stop two guys. And uh, the only reason, I mean, there's really no reason not to play except for that it's a multi save. But it's great to hard cast, it's amazing in shields. Like, the only downside is that sometimes it's not the best in shields. Yeah. And then uh, the blue lineup, we have uh, Scamps. Of course, Scamps is. 
Not a lot of people is playing spells, but for those occasions when it does happen, PJs or just control decks, Skin does help you uh, swarm the board and just give you more body presence. Uh, for a special card, we won't get to at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We got a PPR. Oh, one of my favorite creatures. He's really good against almost every deck. Really, he's really bad against Tricky Turner, but other than that, and Keeper, I guess. But other than that, he's like just a, a real beating. Uh, he's got 2,000 power. He's unblockable. He lets you go under decks. He lets you stop uh, rush decks from double breaking you. He's really just a, a really good card. And mainly our main answer for mirror matches for Sasha. Uh, whenever you play yeah. Sasha, you use PPR. You can do combos by crashing your Anjak to get PPR back and freeze your opponent's creatures. And then if they have blockers, it's unblockable. So that's always a plus. Mm -hmm. And then we got Jim Finbar. Uh, I will always regret not writing three of him on my deck list. He's probably the best card in the game. I don't know what I said that about earlier, but I'm like, BBP? <laughs> Alright, they're close. <laughs> but that's why we play this deck, because it plays the best cards in the game. Um, Joe Finbar, it's crazy card advantage. It almost takes away the downside of attacking your opponent, because you both get the cards. And even then, it like gives super upside when you get to clear their field with like Blinded Blue Prime or Humong uh, when you're tapping or Arbiter when you're tapping down and you're just swinging over them. And this also help feed Sasha more, give you more creature cards yeah, in your hand. So when you unleash with Sasha, you can just discard your creatures, the ones you don't need, and just keep your shields alive and control the board state. And as you see, we run two Bronze Arm uh, Renegades. Uh, just kind of help you accelerate a little bit faster. It's always good to play uh, Broodmother or any other Evos or Turn 5 cards. Uh, that one or two turns early yeah. never hurts. And it's, it's really mostly there for mana fixing. Um, I'd probably rather have some cards over it, but it's a blue-green multi-sieve. Like, I wouldn't rather have any other blue-green multi sieves but it's really good f for what it is. Yeah. It's like Mana Pot Beetle because we lost Mana Pot Beetle. Yeah. Because as you can tell, we have nine multi sieves It's a mana fixture for the Blue. tech card that we added, which is Kalorth, and then also Anjax. Uh, just to give you more bait, because as you see, we're not really running as much nature. And then just to help us play uh, uh, Kalorth more for scamps and Bronze Arm, which is the key cards you want to evolve into. Mm -hmm. And then last resort would be PPR or Fembar, just to crash into their big creatures or help you survive with your Evo so they can either bounce back or they can't really do much of anything uh, just by crashing into it or just wasting their removal spell or effects to bounce a creature back. Yeah, Glorith is just a, it's a solid card. It's the it's pretty much the third Anjak, except it gives cool it gives really cool uh, synergies with Sasha and Body Wheel Prime who Sasha's on leash, you want to get that off as many times as possible. And being able to bounce your doom when he dies, lets you replay it. And then Blinder Beetle Prime, his enter the battlefield is just insane. So if you can bounce your dudes whenever they die. It, uh, it's really just the best answer to Underworld Stalker we have, is crashing into it with Blinder Beetle Prime, Black Forest, and the field. Or crashing into it with Floor and Black Forest. Yeah. So you guys uh, check it out, enjoy the decks, make any tweaks, and just comments down below. Let us know what you uh, change about the deck. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Alright, thanks. Peace out, YouTube.